Hi there again, this is guitarist Krista Vichev and this will be part 3 of the Chromatic 251 video lesson. And in this installment I really wanted to take the time to show you how all the information we covered in part 1 and 2 can be adopted to your own personal style of playing and your preference, tonal preference if you will, when playing chords. Now I definitely love myself some of the close intervals uh, playing seconds. <laughs> voicings like this, where you have a lot of close intervals together, seconds, major seconds, minor seconds, also some of the large leaps when you have sixes and sevens, things like that, that just speaks more to me uh, musically. And so I can take the same information, that closest possible voice leading of the chromatic half steps that we did on both strings. and voice those chords with intervals that speak to me. So I'm going to go through the same exactly voice leading. We have those three chromatic notes for each set of two five ones, but this time I'm going to show you some of the voicings that really uh, kind of resonate with my inner muse, uh, if you will. So I'm going to first play the first set, harmonization, and then we'll talk about exactly how I'm voicing those. So again, this is a two five one in the key of C major, D minor seven, G seven with some alterations or extensions, and a C major 7 chord. So this was the same thing we did before with these voicings, but now with this new harmonization. So I want to show you what I play. For the D minor, I'm playing an A, a C, an F, and a G, respectively the 5, the flat 7, the flat 3, and the 11 of the chord. Nice D minor 11. For the G7, I'm playing a B flat, a B natural, a G, and an A flat. So I have the sharp 9, the 3rd, the root and the flat 9. And then for the C major, I'm playing the 7th, which is B, D, E and A. So 7, 9, 3 and 6. Again. The next one, here's my D minor voicing. I'm playing a C, an F, an E and an A respectively the flat 7, the flat 3, the 9, and the 5th. It requires a little bit of a stretch, but definitely worth the effort. For the G7, I'm playing a B, an E flat, an F, and a B flat. So 3, flat 13, or sharp 5, flat 7, and sharp 9. For the C major, I'm playing a C, a D, a G and a B. So I'm hitting the root, the ninth, the fifth and the seventh of the chord. Sometimes I also add a lower E to resonate. So I have. Then for the next chromatic uh, increment I'm gonna play this D minor. So in this case I'm playing a C, an E, an F and another C irrespective of the flat 7, the ninth, the flat 3, and another flat 7. For the G7, before we had played this, now I'm playing this voicing, which has a B, a D, an F, and a C sharp. So respectively the third, the fifth, the flat 7, and the sharp 11. And for the C major, this voicing, which now has a B, a C, an E, and a D, respectively the seventh, the root, the third, and the ninth. So I have this. Now for the next increment, which is the ninth, or actually, sorry, the root of D minor, I'm going to play this voicing, going to this G7, and going to this C major. So what I have here, I'm playing a C, an E, an F, and a D. 
So I have the flat 7, the 9th, the flat 3 and the root. For the G7 I'm playing this very cool voicing that has, it's just kind of a stretch, but I have the F, the B, the B flat and the E flat. So respectively the flat 7, the 3rd, the sharp 9 and flat 13 of G. So I have this. And now for the C major I'm playing an F sharp, an A, a B and an E, respectively sharp 11, 13, 7 and 3rd. So again. And the very last set we're gonna start here. I'm gonna start the D minor from the 9. So that's the voicing I'm playing. I'm playing a D, an F, a G and an E. So I have the root, the flat 3, I have the 11th and the 9th. For the G7 I'm gonna play this. Before we had just played, I believe, a simple flat 9 chord. This one has a little bit more color. I'm playing a B, a G, A flat and F. So in this case I have the 3rd, the root, I have a flat 9 and a flat 7. And then for the C major, I'm gonna use the same chord actually we used from the very first lesson. This I really like the sharp 11 chord. It has a E, it has a G, it has an A, and it has an F sharp. Respectively, that will be the third, that will be the fifth, that will be the 13th, and the sharp 11. So we have this. So again, if I play them all together, we have this. Now, I'm going to do exactly the same thing starting on the second string. We're going to harmonize this set of uh, notes before again we use the, some of the drop 2 voicing mainly. I'm going to show you how this range can open up the resonance of the guitar and really use some of the close intervals here. This is where they live. So I'm going to harmonize D minor like this with E on the bass. Then here's my G7. C major. Again. Now going through the voicings, I'm having an E, F, C and D. Now respectively this is the 9, the flat 3, the flat 7 and the root of my D minor chord. When I get to the G7, I'm gonna voice it like this. I'm using an F, a B flat, a B natural and E flat. So again in the chord that will be the flat 7, the sharp 9, the 3rd and the sharp 5 or flat 13. For the C major I use this very cool voicing. I'm starting with a G, a B, a D and an E. So I have two thirds in the second here. I have the 5th of the chord, the 7th of the chord, the 9th of the chord and the 3rd. So you're gonna have. Then the next set of notes is gonna be again the D minor chord is gonna get the E, the G7 chord is gonna get the F, and then the C major, the F sharp. This is how I like to voice the ninth of a minor chord. Before we had to use this, which is great voicing, I mean I use it all the time, but for me this speaks more. Now what I have here, I have a flat 3, I have the C, which is going to be the flat 7 of the chord, then I have here, sorry, my bad, I got, I got a D here, that's a different voice I use, and then the E. So I have F, C, D, and E, again flat 3, flat 7, root and 9. For the G7 chord I'm going to use this. It's a very cool voicing, only in thirds basically, so I'm going to have a G to B, I'm gonna have, this is the second, I'm gonna put the B to the C sharp and then C sharp to F or E sharp if you will. So in this case this is a G7, root, third, sharp, 11, flat, 7. 
Again, I'm coming from here in this voicing. And for the C major, we're gonna get the F sharp, which is gonna bring me to this very nice voicing for a sharp 11. Before we had used this, which is not bad, to me this is a more open sound. So I'm playing a G, a D, then I have an E, and then lastly I have the F sharp. Again, the seconds as we talked about. So that's a C major 7, sharp 11. Again, this set goes. Then the next possible set starts on G, G sharp and A. Now to harmonize the 11, before we have done this, which is a very cool voicing I use all the time, but check out this one. This is a very pretty voicing for Because you have a second, you have an E to an F, and then you have the two fifths. So now this chord, D minor 11, I'm have voicing an E, an F, a C, and a G, respectively the 9, the flat 3, the flat 7, and the 11. When I get to the G7, I'm gonna voice it like this. I really like this, is from F melodic minor. Now, this particular voicing, I'm having an E, I'm having a B flat, here's the B natural, which is a third of the chord, and then your flat 9. Again, respective on the chord, that would be the E is the 13, B flat is a sharp 9, B is the third of the chord, and A flat is the flat 9 of G. If I put G on the bass, it's a very nice dissonant outer chord. So, so far I have the 11, then going to this G, and for C, I'm gonna play this very nice voicing that starts on D, goes to B, goes to C, and goes to a. So I have those sixes, I have those seconds, B and C the half steps, and another six. So that's two sixes in a second. Respectively, the ninth of, the, of C, the seven, the root, and the thirteen. Again, so this progression goes. Now, the next pro progression, I'm going to start on the A. A. A sharp and B. Now before we just use a plain F major 7, the relative major of D minor, this I'm gonna just change one note. I like adding that D right there, so I have the 6 again. And then I have a second. This again, 6 is in seconds, close intervals and spreads and, and stretches. Nice. Then for the G7 I'm gonna use the same voicing we used from before, but on the C I'm gonna change it again to get those close intervals. So again, this particular progression, for the D minor I'm voicing F, D, E and A, respectively the flat 3, the root, the ninth, and the 5th. For the G7 I'm doing B, E flat, F and, sorry, B, E flat, F and B flat, and in this particular case that's the 3rd, the flat 13, the flat 7 and the sharp 9, and for the C major I'm voicing it as an E, then going to a C, then going to a D, and then going to a B. So I have the third, the root, the nine, and the seven. Very nice music. So this progression. Nice. And the last one, I'm gonna start on the C and go as we did before. So now the C here, I'm gonna voice the same way we voiced before. I like that voicing. This is again an F over A, F slash A drop 2 voicing. And in this particular case again I'm hitting the A, the E, the F and the C. Respectively that's the 5th, the ninth, the flat 3 and the flat 7 of the chord. When we go to the sharp 11 I'm gonna use this voicing. also before, so that's going to be a B, a D, an F, and the C sharp. In the G7 harmony that's a third, a fifth, a flat seven, and sharp eleven. But for the C I'm going to play this. So now I have a B, 
a C, a G, and a D. It's a very nice voice. So again, the step, half step, and then fifth. So in the harmony, I have a seven, a root, a fifth, and a ninth. So that last one goes. So now if I run the entire set again on the second string, we're gonna have something that looks like this. So again, these are the, just the same concept as we did, that chromatic half-step motion that provides some of the smoothest possible voice leading on this instrument, adapted to my own personal style of playing. And again, we started with very basic chords, which are very easy to play, don't require any stretching. But the same idea can be harmonized in hundreds of ways. I myself am very fascinated with harmony and have counted, uh, as I told you earlier, about 480 plus ways to harmonize each note in terms of combinations and a lot of this material it's available in my book between the voicings which is around 300 pages of these harmonic explorations and plenty of other very fun concepts that can help uh, kind of digest the way harmony moves around the fretboard on this instrument uh, so if you're interested you can find more on my website about this publication so basically now that we have harmonize the chromatic scale again with these new types of voicings same idea but different color because we are combining half steps and uh, sixes, sevens, fifths, some of the larger and close intervals to produce different textures uh, I can apply some of the same principles as we covered in lesson number two I can maybe take a line that goes like this and harmonize it with this new shape so I can play then move to this two then move to this five and then this five, and then this one, and the last one. And it can be very, you know, kind of uh, more of a sensitive, very intimate type playing because now we have a lot of possible half steps and whole steps that you can also use melodically. So I can do something. I can step on some of the melodic notes uh, of the voicing to kind of jump on another uh, voicing. Same idea here, I can take this D minor, then jump to this D minor, jump to this G7, and then go to this G7 to resolve to this C. Or I can combine them in position, so I can maybe take this two, and jump all the way to this, then to this two, then switch to this five over here, and maybe go to this five, this five, and one, to maybe this one, right? So again, the idea is take the information, apply it to your own personal type of playing. You can even find voicings that are all bars on the instrument and harmonize the notes that way if, if you want to move faster or kind of have an easier way of uh, getting around the instrument uh, but still give you an idea as to how close really chords are on the guitar this can be done not only with two five arm progressions this can be done with all kinds and sorts of chords and, and harmonic movements uh, and uh, the sky's the limit as they say so uh, hopefully you have fun with this material and uh, one of the next uh, installments i'm going to take a standard and we're going to go about the guitar and harmonize uh, all the melodic notes of the, uh, of the tune as well as play all the chords in one position by using any one of those inversions uh, that we have covered in these three lessons. So thank you very much for uh, watching and for listening and hope to see you soon.